fucking clap. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Thank you. That's a big help. Good You're singing the audio. Hey guys, me again, and I have a friend with me today. Ellie, can you say hi? <laughs> so if you remember last time we chatted, I kind of went through my last four weeks of keto, some of the benefits that I've seen. Hello. Hey, where are you going? You don't want to stay with mommy? Well, there you have it. So anyway, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you some of the things that I've struggled with over the last four weeks. And you know, while the results have been overwhelmingly positive, there have definitely been a few challenges. The very first thing that I really struggled with was probably about week two into keto. I started getting heart palpitations, I was getting dizzy, and I was just feeling like the, the world was spinning and I could not figure out for the life of me what was going on. So a big thing on keto is that when your body starts to transition from eating carbohydrates, which your body converts to glucose. Hi. So when it doesn't get that anymore and it starts to use fat, yeah. and it starts to use fat as fuel. Um, here, mommy. Okay. Then when your body does that, it dumps its glycogen stores, and so you get depleted of electrolytes really, really quickly. Once I recognized that was happening, I started salting my food, I started taking a zip fizz every day, and really started paying attention to how my body was feeling. And I gotta tell you, that changed the game for me with keto. And ever since then, I can tell when my electrolytes are starting to get low, but I've started to find ways to kind of get proactive about putting the electrolytes back into my system and I feel like a million bucks again. So every month us women have to struggle a little bit because we have to go through our menstrual cycle. And I gotta tell you guys, like it was a concern for me because one of the things that I started doing, which I know most people tell you not to do, which is don't weigh yourself every day. Well, me being a little bit obsessive, decided that I wanted to weigh myself every day. I wanted to see kind of what I was trending, how my body was adapting to being on this new lifestyle. And I'm so thankful that I did because while I had some periods of time in there where I was really frustrated because the scale was tipping in the opposite direction of where I thought it was going, it really helped me to capture trends, you know, understanding different parts of the month, depending on what was going on in my body as a woman, everybody has to do it in a way that works for them. But for me personally, it was really helpful to start to see some trends over time. So I'm really encouraged to take a look at the numbers after I've been doing this for a few months to see if I can capture even more trends. If you're not the type of person that can handle the ups and downs of what the scale is gonna say, probably maybe stick to once a week, once a month. I will definitely say that as a woman, our body weight fluctuates constantly. And largely that's because we have lots of hormones that we're dealing with on a daily and weekly basis. You know, I read an article and I can link it below so you can take a look at it that sort of described over our menstrual cycle period, so that four week period, what sort of weight increase you might expect week over week. And it was really interesting. The first week, weight was at a low. The second week, weight was at an all-time high. And then back to an all-time low, and then back to an all-time high. It really is a roller coaster. So all of that to say, be patient with yourself, especially if you're a woman. The scale is really only one indicator. It is one data point. I would strongly encourage you to take your measurements and to really start to listen to your body and to start making notes. I mean, I take notes every day of how I'm feeling. I put everything in my fitness pal, including you know tracking all of my food that I'm eating so that I can understand like what sort of foods are making me feel lousy and what sort of foods are making me feel great. One of the other things that's been a little bit of a transition for our family has been prepping lunches for the kids. So prior to starting keto, I was packing Lucas a lunch, but I wasn't really packing him many snacks. And with Ellie, I wasn't packing her lunch at all because her school provides lunch and I wasn't packing her any snacks because they provide those too. So I was kind of a little bit worried about how much food as a family we were just gonna start to consume and sort of how much of an impact that was gonna have on my day to day because it takes some time to prep lunches, let's face it. But knowing that I'm putting good food in their bellies, knowing that I know exactly what is going into their mouths every day gave me a lot of comfort and so it didn't seem as big of a deal. Scott and I really had to take some time and figure out how much food are we gonna need. And that took several weeks for us to kind of get adjusted to. And then also really understanding how to break up those meals in a way that they don't feel hungry at the end of the day. I mean, 
the kids, full disclosure, they're not on full keto. Like we still give them carbs, but we're just really smart about what we give them. We're not giving them processed foods. We're not giving them sugar. If they're getting carbs, it's, you know, because they're eating almond crackers or they're eating, you know, zucchini squash or something like that. With kids, you're gonna need to adjust and find something that works for them. And we're still trying to figure that out, but I will say we're definitely getting a better handle on it. So one of the other things I had some concerns about going into this that gave me some insecurity about starting this diet were largely pertaining to how my physicians were going to react to the news that I decided to go low carb because let's face it, there's just not a lot of adoption of this sort of thinking right now within Western medicine. There are so many resources out there, guys, to help get yourself in a place where you can not only educate yourself, but have some, you know, talking points if you decide to go to your doctor and you need a checkup or if you have you know, a pre-existing condition or a chronic condition that you're dealing with and you think that going low carb is something that might help address that, we'll definitely put some literature below so that you guys can take a look at some of the resources that we've been using over the last four weeks. There are so many podcasts, there are blogs, there's a ton of literature online, and I'm not just talking from people like you and me who are, you know, just every day trying to fix our lifestyle with food, but we're talking about cardiologists and pancreatologists and researchers and people who, you know, are in the medical community who are starting to look at alternate ways of curing some of these diseases that we've been told our whole life are incurable, like diabetes. There are doctors out there who are willing to entertain the idea that low carb is actually a way to treat a lot of the things that we've only really ever treated with conventional medicine. So guys, like I said before, few challenges along the way, definitely some good things to be aware of, especially if you're a woman, from my perspective. My best advice to you would just be patient with yourself. This is a process and your body has to go through it. I mean, you didn't get to where you are overnight and you're not gonna get to where you need to go overnight either. I'm really encouraged by where our family is at now. Yeah, we've struggled with a few little things, but I feel like they're not hurdles that we haven't been able to overcome or that we're not really working to make better. So if you're really not sure if you wanna start this low carb lifestyle or you really just want to learn a little bit more about it before you decide to make the switch, I would highly recommend checking out a few podcasts that Scott and I have been listening to pretty regularly, and we'll put those down in the description below so that you can take a look at them. You know, at the end of the day, you have to decide whether it's something that's going to work for you and your family, but I will say this, it's possible, we're doing it, and if we can do it, anybody can do it. It's just a matter of figuring out how to incorporate it into your life in a way that works for you and your family. So Scott and I really want to be able to provide some resources to you that are going to help you along your journey whether or not you decide to do keto or some other version of low carb. And we'll absolutely spend some more time in future videos talking through that. But for now, we're just gonna wrap things up. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Ellie, is that a wrap? Yeah? Can you say, that's a wrap? <laughs> hey, can you look in the camera? Hey, 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 can I have a kiss? <laughs>